you've gone through the application process, you follow up on your application, and the hiring manager schedules you for an interview. Then you do some mock interviews with your teacher or Gary and Carrie, and finally you get to the interview. You're feeling good, and then the interviewer asks you a question and your mind goes blank. You can't remember how you're supposed to answer that question. So what do you do? Well, on this week's episode, that's what we're going to talk about. What do you do when you forget what to say during an interview? It's the week of February 9th through the 13th, and this is the QC Step Podcast. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the QC Step Podcast. I'm Corey Finneran. I got some feedback from last week's episode. Um, If you haven't watched or listened to that episode yet, it was on four ways to manage anxiety in your job search. And I got an email in response to this episode from Sean in Mason City, Iowa. And Sean is a job developer like Gary and Carrie, and he helps adults with disabilities in finding employment. And he shared this from his own experience, something he went through. And so I'm gonna read it right now. And it says, when I worked in a factory, I've been on supervisor positions more than 10 times and gave more than 10 horrible interviews. I I got myself so bound up over answering the questions correctly, I couldn't function. And the anxiety over the previous interview always added to the next. After one interview, I told friends I was surprised they didn't straight up fire me, let alone promote me. And then something clicked. I interviewed for a job out of town and decided it really didn't matter if I got the job or not. It was a shot in the dark. If I get it, great. If I don't, eh, no big deal. I was relaxed and answered questions honestly as they came to me. Turns out I was second choice for that job but I maintained my laid back attitude for my next interview for a job developer. They were putty in my hands. I've always wanted to do that. And it landed right in front of the camera. By sharing his experience, Sean gives us a a great example of how being too nervous and not managing your anxiety and your nervousness can negatively impact your ability to get a job. It's safe to say that Sean was stuck in a rut, a rut of nervousness, and he got out of that rut by applying for a job he didn't really care about. He needed the experience of a job interview without the pressure of really wanting the job. Um, Not being too nervous for that interview then allowed him to get comfortable with interviewing and then he was able to have that experience in his back pocket when he went in for an interview that he really did care about. And what happened when he went into the interview with his nervousness in check? He got the job and the interviewers were, as he said, putty in his hands. And I'd bet anything that the reason they were putty in his hands, it wasn't because he wowed them with his answers. Um, He didn't have the perfect answer for every question that they had. It's probably because he exhibited confidence. And if you're nervous, you're not going to show much confidence. I also got a few questions from students this week, and I'm going to answer two of them. The first one is uh, from a student that wonders why the green screen is reflecting on my glasses. And it's actually, it's not a green green screen, Um, it's the lighting in here. And my glasses have some sort of coating on them so that uh, the color of the lights, uh, although they're white, it looks green when it reflects off my glasses. You can probably see it right now. And in case you don't believe me, I'm going to snap a picture right now 
and include it in the, the video for this so you can see that it's the lights and not a green screen. So here we go. Okay. So this green reflection, it bothers me as much as it does you. But if I don't wear my glasses, then I won't be able to see what I'm supposed to be saying. And if I got rid of the lights, then it would be pitch black in here. And so until something else is figured out, until they, I get new glasses, I guess, uh, we're both gonna have to live with the green reflection off of my glasses. If it's too distracting, then I apologize. It probably isn't as distracting as my shirt was last week. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but uh, I had really thin lines and it looked really weird um, on the video. I'm not sure why it did that, but anyways. Another question that I got from a student is uh, the one that we're going to discuss today. And this student wants to know what she should do if she forgets what to say during an interview. And this is a great question. Um, I could really see this happening if, even if you've done a lot of preparation for your interview and you've almost memorized your lines, you've memorized what you want to say. So here are some thoughts on what you should do if you do forget what to say during an interview. The first thing is something you should do ahead of time. Practice your responses, but when you're preparing for the interview, don't memorize your answers. Know the points that are uh, that you would like to hit on uh, in the, your answer, but don't try to memorize the full sentences. You're kind of setting yourself up for failure if everything you do in the interview is scripted and memorized. You're going to be nervous about being able to remember everything and how you want how you want to say it. And if it goes, if let's say the interview goes in a different direction, or if you forget what you wanted to say, the whole interview can be derailed from that. So instead of trying to memorize answers, just try to remember a point or two for each question that you wanna to touch on in your answer, and then let the rest come naturally. This will make your presentation of the information seem uh, much more comfortable uh, than saying obviously rehearsed lines. If you say obviously rehearsed lines, they're going to pick up on it. So don't uh, give yourself too much to think about because if you do that, it's just a recipe for disaster. Let your personality shine through, not your ability to recite answers. So that's what you can do ahead of time to keep this from happening. But let's say you're in the interview and it's happened. How do you respond? Don't panic. And that's easy to say, right? But an interviewer, they're gonna pick up on the fact that you're not sure what to do. And your ability to handle this situation is going to show them what you would do on the job when you're faced with a difficult situation. You're showing them how you're going to handle high pressure situations. So stay calm. There's no shot clock in an interview. If you're not familiar with the shot clock is in basketball, you have to take a shot before the shot clock runs down. They don't have those in an interview. You don't have to deliver your answer within five seconds of the person asking it to you. What you don't want to do is start talking and hope that you figure out what you want to say as you're going. To me, that sounds like a disaster. My suggestion is to take a second, and if you don't have it within maybe five seconds or so, say something like, may I have a second to think about my answer? You might think that this will make it look bad in the interview, but I honestly don't think that's the case. It shows that you're being careful and that you care enough about your answer that you're going to want to make sure that you get your thoughts in order. I think an interviewer will probably recognize that you're not real sure how to answer and they'll probably even rephrase it for you, which will in turn help you come up with an answer. It gives you more time to think and they might say it in a different way that makes more sense or that helps you come up with an answer. If it's a matter of not being real sure what the question is, maybe they, they use terminology that you're not familiar with, or if they just ask you a question that you just don't know what they mean, you can always ask an interviewer to rephrase the question. You could say, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Can you explain your question? An interviewer's job, especially for entry level positions, it's not to stump you. It's not their goal to make you look bad. So let's say the question was a scenario type question. An example of this would be, um, say, 
uh, what would you do if? You know, there's a lot of questions that would start with that. You might be asked, um, what would you do if you saw a coworker stealing? Or what would you do if a customer asked for their money back but didn't have their receipt? If you're just not sure what to say uh, when they ask this type of question, you can always fall back on this. I would follow company policy, and if I wasn't sure at that moment, I would ask a manager. You really can't go wrong with that answer. So in wrapping this thing up, if you're not sure what to say, relax. It doesn't mean that you've bombed the interview, so don't let the interview get away from you by panicking. Stay calm and really just do the best that you can. Let your personality out, and if you do feel like you've bombed one question, don't let it ruin the rest of your interview. So thanks to the student that sent in this question and thanks to all of you that sent in questions. Right now I have six topics on the list to discuss and they've all been sent in by students like you. As I said last week, we really like getting your questions for the podcast because you know what situations you're facing in your job search or on the job. And these questions that were sent in to us are a good mix of job search questions and questions for on the job. Um, and if you have a question that you would like here discussed here on the podcast, you can submit them to me by clicking on the submit your employment question icon that's on the side of our website. And then you can fill out this form right here. Also, you can connect with our program through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find those at the, uh, those links at the top of qcstep.com. That does it for this week's episode. I will be back next week with another episode of the QC Step Podcast. We'll